Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Hope that you're doing great today, having a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. Um, I am having my morning cup of tea here today and I'm being adventurous today. Um, this is a tea that I picked up while I was traveling in Greece uh, on my Nomad cruise, which you may or may not remember me talking about. It was a cruise I took in April. And um, I picked up this tea uh, called Dittany Tea. And uh, this is actually a new package, but I've been drinking it since I got back because it's really, really cool. It's actually a mountain tea. And in Greece, they believe that the mountains, you know, the soil there has special, uh, you know, nutrients in it and not kind of, you know, spoiled by uh, industrialization and, and pollution. And that this tea is very, very good for you. Um, I don't know what's in it. Um, I don't really mind is I mean I asked and they said it's like thyme or rosemary oregano those kinds of mountain cooking teas or cooking spices so that's what I'm drinking today my Dittany tea from Greece <laughs> you know I, I just I just love tea I love tea of any kind and uh, the more mysterious the better for me so I don't know what's in there what do you think it's really really cool um, I looked online and it did tell me a few kind there's different uh, variations so I, I don't know which one I've got but this is Dittany tea from Greece so anyway, I hope that you're doing great. I've got an, a fun topic to chat with you about today related to travel, but I want to first thank our sponsor for today's show. That's Puritan's Pride. We uh, love talking about um, health and well-being and how it can really impact the quality of your life in your 60s. So thanks to Puritan's Pride, you can check out their website and find out the you know how the, how the body can really uh, use the nutrition uh, to, in order to have a healthier lifestyle. So thanks to Puritan's Pride. Now, topic for today. You need to be strong and healthy for this one because um, Sally Fox, one of our bloggers, wrote this article and she said that um, she loves to travel and she's traveled all her life like, like I have, but she decided to go back um, to where she lived when she was younger in France and kind of tells the story of her experience and um, traveling again as an older woman. And um, oh, by the way, I must tell you about this necklace. L just a second. Th this necklace, I'm looking at it is in the mirror. I got this just the other day and it reminded me of Greece. It is so like the kind of necklaces that you find in Greece. It was, uh, I got it at Mango. It was on a, on sale. It was like 8 uh, 95 francs. And uh, I just think it's so cute. And uh, I just wanted to mention that because I know you all love my necklaces and you <laughs> like me. I think, what is she wearing today? Anyway, but back to Sally. She went back to France and uh, she revisited this country and tells her story about kind of what um, happened to her, you know, like just the, the experiences and how it was different than when she was young. And I have so noticed this um, and wanted to share too. The first thing is when I was younger traveling, I, I've always been a planner. I always planned my trips. I never ventured off without hotels in advance or flights, of course, or ships or, or, or trains. But I was a little more casual. I mean, I really did believe that if I landed somewhere and decided to go somewhere else the next day, I would easily be able to change my plans and off I would go. But now, um, and according to Sally too, she feels that she has to travel by planning smarter and, and really have herself organized, <clears throat> still have the magic uh, of travel uh, serendipity, you know, where things happen kind of sp on the spur of the moment and by accident. But uh, choose places that you you know where they are. They're in the, you know, you've looked on the map. You can see the, you can even on Google Maps do a look at the neighborhood so that you, you know you have a feeling of where you're going to be and, and just kind of at least have some backup. Uh, if you if you can work with uh, like booking.com or those kinds of places where you can change your plans almost until the last minute. Uh, so it's, it's just thinking and planning in a little bit more different in a different way. And make sure you have all your critical instructions written down uh, for the hotels. I tell you something I always do, and it's really saved me uh, time in, in the past, is whenever I know which hotel I'm going to stay at, I always write their phone number and their details in on my in my phone. I enter them as a contact on my phone. And in the, um, the subject line in the phone, I always put the booking number or just some information, you know, the name of a contact or whatever. I have found, because I use my phone like you probably do for everything. So I just decided that 
I really would, from the very beginning, I would put the phone number in my phone. Sally doesn't mention that specifically, but you know, she did mention hotels.com and booking.com, Airbnb, which make that planning process a little more secure. But she said the most important thing is to relax. Nothing is ever going to go as you fully plan it. It just never will happen. Very rare. So just always be prepared to just relax, go to a Starbucks, <laughs> sit down, breathe. If you've missed your train or you your hotel is moved or closed or whatever can happen uh, in, in Europe or, or in other parts of the world. And, you know, there's going to be things like she mentions, the, th- the town having its 300th year anniversary where every hotel is booked and it's like insane. How were you to know that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next thing she says, which I actually do love to, is go le- do less. You know, in the, in the olden days, like when you used to travel when you were younger, you would go everywhere. You'd go to every museum, every mo- every monument, every tourist uh, building, every cafe, restaurant. You'd try everything. At least I did. And she did too. And now it's like, okay, just do less. Choose the five things that you really want to do or the three things, however you're going to, how long you're going to be in the place and just enjoy them. Yes, you didn't get to every 15 museums, you got to two and it doesn't matter. Um, Just work at the speed that works for you. I I just think that's just the best idea, advice ever. And I still struggle with this. One thing I always do when I get to a new town is a city or a town, I go on a hop on, hop on, hop bus, hop on, hop off bus. And it takes you all the way around the city, usually a couple of hours, $12, never too, too expensive. And that way you can see everything, the the highlights from a bus. You can get off if you want, as it hop on, hop off indicates. You can just jump off and then get back on. But if you've only got a couple of days, you want to see the whole city um, and then go back to two or three places. That's the best way to do it. Another thing uh, she recommends is to go wireless, of course, take your phone, but have backups. Keep your, um, your, your passwords in a place, you know, coded that, you, that no one can understand, like use lastpass.com or something like that. Have your key addresses, phone numbers, reservation numbers written down. I have a little wrist, um, wristlet that I carry with me and I have a papers that I put in there with all that information. And this has happened to me once. I, I, I didn't lose my phone. I misplaced my phone. And then for like three seconds, I was like, I have no idea who anybody's phone number is. I couldn't call my son for help. I, if I had a real problem at this very minute, I have no idea. I'd have to, I don't know what I would do. I'd go on Facebook, I guess, and say help. But, um, you know, it's really important to go wireless, but back yourself up. Another one, pack light and then pack lighter. Okay, she talks, she gets, by the way, in this article, it's some really good references. She refers to one woman, Sarah, who's um, worked with Rick Steves, you know, the famous uh, traveler, and they have a whole mechanism for traveling, including planning and packing and weighing your stuff. And it's very elaborate. And uh, I have a bit different um, program for me. I just use a small suitcase. (laughs) And I've, you know, every time I travel, I'm sure like you, I say, I'm going to go lighter this time. And then I end up adding a backpack or adding another shoulder bag or something. But I'm going on a trip in a few weeks. And this time, for, for sure, seriously, I'm going to um, pack light. I am so, like you, so tired of being, you know, able to not be able to get up and down a subway on the stairs. Because in a lot of cities in Europe, there are no elevators. You know, it's, it's just really, honestly, not geared for people with any kind of mobility um, issue. It's getting better. In Switzerland, it's very good. But, um, you know, you have to just, and if you're in a country where you don't recognize the signs, there may be lifts, but you don't know where they are. Um, it's just important to, to take care uh, and, and go light. Anyway, as, as Rick Steves does say, apparently, no one ever wishes that they had taken more stuff. I've forgotten a couple of little tiny things. They're always the tiny things, but uh, no one's ever said, I wish I'd packed more. And the final thing that uh, that Sally talks about, which I just love, is uh, to travel with wonder. Open up to wonder, W-O-N-D, wonder, and and wonder, (laughs) but wonder. 
open your heart to new experiences, new places, new people. Um, you know, delight in the small discoveries that you have on the road and practice, um, you know, experiencing those things for the first time with big eyes like a child, you know, and look at it and th think, wow, that was amazing. Travel really honestly gives to me the, bi the biggest gifts. And I'm so grateful that I have the, um, the desire to travel. I don't travel expensively anymore. It's just a matter of getting out there and doing my very best with what I've got. And as I always talk about, it's the places, the people and the perspectives that you get from travel that really inspire me. So I know we have a lot of travelers out there. I know you guys all love traveling too, or many of you do. And I'd love to know, what do you think are the secrets to a great trip, a great overseas trip. What do you think of the secrets? What do you do? Thanks, Sally, for this article. It was very inspiring to read it, and I really do appreciate sharing it with the community. And I'd love to know what secrets you have for traveling overseas that we can, that we can all learn from. So take care, safe travels if you're going anywhere this summer or winter and just enjoy yourself and maybe those tips have helped you a little bit and I look forward to reading your comments and uh, talking to you all again very, very soon. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.